Welcome to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, everybody. And I am making a video to show you the progress on the Janome Free Arm. This is, of course, one of the hybrid vintage machines you've heard me talking about and how uh, I have been working on it and making decisions about what I wanted to do with it, uh, what I wanted to do to it, and how long I thought it should take and how much effort I should invest in the machine itself. So you'll see various parts laying around here. I'm going to move the machine so you can see uh, right down into the uh, mechanical area where I've gotten the lid off. So now uh, you've seen me doing a number of, I guess, procedures on this machine. And now that I'm coming to sort of the end, or at least I think it's the end of its, of its overhaul, I wanted to show you, of course, uh, uh, this particular Thing I want to highlight here is where you want to put lubrication and where you don't. Because remember what I mentioned to you all about these nylon gears. These are in good shape. They are not cracked. They don't appear to be uh, seriously stained and I want to keep it that way. And so let's see, I'm going to zoom in and I'll show you where I'm putting oil. Again, all of you may have machines that vary just a bit in terms of where sewing machine oil goes. Now remember, when you are oiling your machine, let's say you've been using it, you've been sewing with it, it's running fine, and you're going to oil it uh, before a project, you're only going to use one drop. And unlike some of the older machines, you will remember, of course, that I had to take the lid off of the machine in order to get access, because of course they have gotten rid of the oiling holes in the top. Uh, I don't know if that's to save money or to discourage people from taking care of the machines, but of course, the top comes off, thankfully. Now, this is part of a, you might say, a restorer's tip. When that you have a machine like this one that has not been run in a long time, it's, it's relatively dry in a lubrication sense, I'm going to put more than one. I might put two here, right? I'm going to use just a little bit more oil than I normally would. Uh, if your machine is not... Um, uh, you know, if it hasn't been dormant and you're not trying to bring it back, you don't necessarily want to use uh, this much oil. One drop is normally sufficient because remember, frequency of oiling a sewing machine is more important than the quantity of oil. <clears throat> but in this situation, what, what I'm dealing with here is a machine that has sat for a very long time. So it needs a little bit more oil than you might normally have. Now let's see if I can... I'm going to try to put a little light on here so you can see further down into the machine. Put my little work light here and hopefully not be in the way. So there are linkages down below. And if you have your own machine and you can't quite see what's down here, I suggest getting yourself a work light or a flashlight. And you want to essentially look for areas where metal touches metal. And if you're not sure, of course, you can always um, turn the hand wheel. I'm turning the crank because my hand wheel is not attached at the moment. And this will help verify, for example, right down here, there's a piece that if you look closely, you'll see it, you'll see it come out. You'll see a piece of metal. There it is. It just popped out, and then as I turn the, the hand wheel again, it comes back. I want to put a drop in here because I know that it's going to need it. And if you're not sure and the manual doesn't tell you, again, by turning the drive shaft with the hand wheel or the hub of the hand wheel, you'll see which parts uh, allow metal to metal. And again, I want to emphasize that metal to metal contact. What's another way you can do this? I'm going to push. I don't know if you guys can see that lever moving. What I'm pushing on is my reverse lever. Uh, and my thumb, if I come down here on that front knob, I push in the reverse lever, 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 and I see it moving. And of course, I want to be sure that I can get, um, I want to be sure that I can get, oh, it's going to sit there. How about that? Uh, my hands, I want one hand on my oiler so I can see what's, what's actually moving, metal to metal. And I want those things to be uh, to run so that they run freely. Now I'm going to turn, now I'm turning my stitch lever, stitch length lever knob, 
and just making sure that I have touched anything that is, uh, again, metal to metal. Getting my sewing machine oil there. That's all I'm using. There's nothing else. Um, the only other lubricant you ever use in a machine is grease. And uh, in this case, I don't have a spot for grease currently. Now, let's see what else we've got here. Um, I'm now going to move over to the left side of the machine. And I'll show you, there are two ways to get to the presser and needle bar area. Let's see if we can get you guys a decent view of that. Now, you'll notice that we're not done, we're, now we're over on the left side here. And I'm going to put in a drop, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a, there's a, there's a hole Looks like an oiling access hole right here. I'm going to put a drop there. And again, we're going to get this machine. This machine was not frozen. I was very fortunate when I got it. But you'll notice one area I'm not putting oil. And that is where my plastic gears are. Uh, I am not going to oil where the plastic gear touches the, the, the steel gear. There's a, there's a gear down here it interacts with. I'm not going to apply oil there. Now, uh, let's see, what else have we got? We've got some linkages up here. If you guys remember, uh, in one of the earlier videos, I was turning, there's a 180 degree radius. Now, there's a linkage under, under this uh, cam. And that linkage also connects to this set of cams. I'm not going to put oil there. However, there is a spot right here where the where the metal where metal on metal, again, it's a metal to metal connection. That's what I want to ensure that I have good lubrication for. And I want to preserve these plastic gears as much as possible. Now at the other end of this, there's a place where this little drive shaft moves in. I can oil that. I can even do this over here. But again, keeping, keeping uh, lubricants and oils away from that plastic can help extend its life. Uh, this here, this, is, this looks like a piece. I can't tell if it moves or not. So now I'm going to move you guys over. We're going to come over to the left, and we'll be looking down above where the needle and the pressure bar are. Okay, I'm going to turn the drive shaft and you will see, you should see, this is basically you're looking at the needle bar coming up and down along with the take-up arm which is kind of moving towards you in the camera. Now, from up above, you will see, I think you can see, yeah, we've got a little hole right Got a little hole right here. Where did it go? There it is. It's right here, guys. I'm going to come a little closer for you. And of course, you'll see I'll take a, a drop or two of oil and put it here. I'm also going to be uh, looking at these other areas where I know that metal moves against metal. And you may not see a hole there. You may, for example, right here. We know, and if you're not sure, just turn your crank or your hand wheel and you'll see it. You'll see uh, the metal on metal movement. Here's another one, right? Actually, there's this actually has a little oiler hole. And again, we're testing from up above. And then, of course, we're going to go down in the side in a moment and see what we can oil there. And again, the fact that the machine moves tells me it was it was stored indoors. And if you're fortunate, you'll, you'll have a machine like that. All right. We can go ahead and put a drop in our, above our presser spring. This, of course, is our press. This adjusts the pressure on the presser bar. And it would appreciate a little lubrication as well. Now I'm going to drop the camera down and we're going to go down to the side and I'll show you guys what I'm going to touch there. Many of you may have oil machines this way before, but I'll, I wanted to go ahead and show you as I'm putting the machine back together and getting her ready for her eventual 
uh, audition to hopefully sew nice stitches again. Okay guys, now you can see from the side and of course there's a key area right here that I'm oiling and that is part of the linkage. Uh, down below there's a little slot here and this is where the arm for the zigzag movement is and we're going to definitely want this to be lubricated. Uh, not any dust or dirt in here. Uh, I'm going to look at my... I think I see a little area right up in here which is on the needle bar. I'm going to clean. Sometimes you'll see a lot of old oil, uh, especially if a machine's been stored in a place like an attic. So I'm going to take my uh, rubbing alcohol here on the end of a cotton swab and I'm going to reach in here and sometimes you'll see it's kind of a it's kind of like a little mark line and let's see if you guys can see it right right here and this is where you'll see like a little faint level of old oil and sewing lint and that'll come off very easily you can see you can see some of that coming off. This is a relatively clean machine. It really is. Uh, I've dealt with a lot worse. But, uh, you know, while I'm in here, I want to go ahead and get that out. You know, give the machine the benefit of the doubt. Uh, because, again, you know, very often you get a machine and you are the new owner and you're, you really don't know the details of how it was serviced or not serviced or treated. So now I'm going to focus... Of course, this is the needle bar, and I have the needle up. Now, when I turn it, it comes down, and now I'm getting a new layer of oil on the needle bar in the two places where it's held. And that's going to be really useful. The machine is going to, you know, sewing machines are remarkable. They'll do all sorts of things for you, but when you actually give them service and you get them cleaned and lubricated, I think I see a I see a, a lint, a uh, piece of lint hiding here. Aha. Uh -huh. um, when you actually go and give the machines the, the service that they need, it is remarkable what they will do. They, they, <laughs> the way they sew for you, just, it really, it's like night and day, and you won't really notice it until you've, if you've tried to sew with it before. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's your machine. Maybe it's just an old machine you've had, and it's gone without service. And then all of a sudden, um, you start to sew with it after you've uh, given it the maintenance it needed. And gosh, what a difference it makes. Okay, uh, let's see what else we've got to look at here. Uh, now sometimes, you know, you may or may not see something moving in the machine. You may think, well, gosh, how do I know if it's, gonna, if it's going to uh, make a difference? The, the, again, the key thing I want to stress here is the amount because if you go, if you go overboard with the oil, you're going to have a big greasy mess somewhere in your house. Uh, you, so you want to, like I say, I'm adding more than I would for normal oiling, but not that much more. And here's one. There's one right. There's a linkage right back here, so I want to put a, a drop of oil there and here. Your manual, again, may direct you in terms of where you are to oil, but you can always do this sort of, you know, take a look at the machine and watch, watch what is moving against what. When you have metal on metal, that's, that's a good indication of where you want to apply a drop of sewing machine oil. Uh, this is how these machines were designed to work. Now, many of the, the industrials, of course, uh, they have, many of them have oil sumps, and we'll talk about that when I start doing my videos on the Brother Industrial that I introduced you all to not too long ago. And let's see, I've cleaned out. Let's uh, pan down, you guys can see here, I've got the little door open to where the bobbin case is. This here is was actually cleaned of dust. I think it's just a little staining. Uh, again, you may have areas of the machine that are not uh, mechanical in nature. And of course you can, you know, I've done some uh, videos before talking about the cleaning of a machine and that is for aesthetics and that does matter but it's not really uh, going to impact the functioning of the machine itself. So we have oiled the side compartment. We've oiled above. We've been careful not to get oil 
on the uh, nylon or plastic gears. And there's one little spot I want to cover for you all, and it's something that often gets forgotten about. Most of the time, you will see on the little side door of your sewing machine, there's actually a system that helps hold this side door in place. <clears throat> now, a few of the machines in the vintage era had screws, and very often there may have been a lower price model where you would simply attach it with a screw. A couple of Kenmores were that way. But for the most part, <clears throat> most of these have, they have little, uh, little hinges and they swing open and they have a clip. So if you look, you will see get my light on there you will see there's a clip right here and a spot here and when you bring the door over you hear a little clip where it shuts well this machine can function this way but it would be really useful to have just a little dab of grease I'm just going to put a little dab right here where it connects to the machine and it's a little bit better than oil because it you know it's not really a, a mechanical part per se but it makes it it makes it a, a little bit easier for that I guess spring clip if you will to function and that's really all you have to do with that that's one of the few places on this machine that I one of the only ones that I'm going to actually use uh, grease on Okay guys, now I've turned the machine around so you can see this is of course the hand wheel side. I've got the clutch knob just sitting here. I like to, uh, sometimes I'll screw something back in just to give it a place to exist. Now, one thing I want to do before moving forward, this is old grease. Now grease lasts a long time, but at some point grease will, over time it'll get thick and it becomes more like a sludge than a lubricant. So I'm going to remove that, <clears throat> get some of the old traces of the grease off of here. Uh, and it's very possible that this grease was put here. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not really a high friction area, but again, you can see uh, it's not just the color of it, but it's, you know, it's, it's not very, uh, uh, it's not flowing all that well. It's more, more like a paste. And that tells me that the grease is, uh, needs to be removed. I'll put a little bit on there to replace it. Someone who serviced the machine in the past would have put this on. Um, uh, not really sure. Uh, how long ago and that's why we service the machines because we really don't know I'm going to dip my swab in alcohol here the alcohol will help to sort of lift you don't really have to scrape it so much uh, a little rubbing alcohol in your cotton swab and that's going to help get some of that old stuff off of there and again we're just we're getting the machine ready for new lubrication If this grease were fresh and still good, it would come right off I mean, immediately with the alcohol. And that's one of the things that I can also use to kind of help me figure out, you know, do I need to re-grease the machine? Is it, you know, is the, is the grease too old to really function as a lubricant? And I think this is. And it's not really difficult to take off. It's uh, fairly simple. Uh, it should be anyway with uh, when you have the alcohol as a as a cleaner uh, again remembering you don't want to get the alcohol on your table um, or on the paint of your machine now this machine was was painted in the late 70s I cannot tell you the exact chemistry of the paint obviously it may or may not be a form of lacquer I don't really know but uh, I do know that strong isopropyl alcohol can damage any varnish or paint finish. Notice I said can. I don't know if it will, but you, you know, there's no point in taking a chance with your machine. You don't want to inadvertently harm it. So again, I'm pulling more of this old grease off. 
it's you know it has the consistency of something like frosting that's kind of when you know it's it's time to get it off of there and just kind of come under here you want to make sure that the old grease if, if it stays on there and gets hard it can interfere with you know the alignment of things like parts your hand wheel you don't want to have problems with your hand wheel for for anything and you know you can be as fastidious with this as you want to be you know this is not really an aesthetic issue for the machine for the most part but I would get, like I say, get as much of the old grease off as you can. Uh, it should all come off, just be patient. And then once you have the machine cleaned, you will have <clears throat> uh, a nice surface to then put some new grease on. And I don't use, you guys have seen me when I lubricate machines, I don't really use lots of grease. And don't forget your washer. You heard it go clink a minute ago. Uh, it will sometimes have grease on it as well. This one doesn't really have much of anything. Not a lot. All right. So before I put this back on, I'm going to take... Uh, just a small amount of grease, put it on the hub here. Some people will use sewing oil. Uh, again, I'm not slathering tons of grease on here. That is not necessary. Uh, I really just want enough to, to prevent the, the hand wheel from sticking to this hub. That's really all I'm really after when it comes to this. Uh, in fact, once your hand wheel is secured, you really don't have uh, a ton of friction between the the wheel and the hub. You just want to make sure that it will move. And of course, <clears throat> for the threads, it for the threads themselves. This is where my clutch knob is going to thread. And for that, I would I'm going to use sewing machine oil. I prefer that over grease on the threads. And last not but not least is my little clutch knob that you saw there. I'm just going to check it. I don't really, I'm really not seeing any dirt or anything filling up the threads. So, and I've got oil on the, the threads of where it's going to screw and I can even put a little oil here. That's fine. And that's basically what I have done. I've already oiled. You guys will remember I have lubricated the bearings for the motor. I did that in the earlier video on the motor series. And you will see these are the two screws that hold on the, uh, the outer covering. I put them here just because I like knowing where they are. That helps me not lose things. So that is essentially the lubrication of the Genomi Freearm. And you guys saw uh, when I worked underneath the machine and now we've come up top. We've come to the side. We've already cleaned and lubricated of course the bobbing shuttle area. And right now uh, the next video, I, I will show you guys how I put the belt on. Now, I've done, I've done videos before where I put belts on, but I'll do this one again in a, in a, in a follow-up video so you guys can see me. It never hurts to see belts be put on and then how you would adjust the bracket. Of course, that has to be done before I put the cover on. So thank all of you for watching. I just wanted to let you know I hadn't forgot the little Janome here. And, and uh, just as with my uh, white rotary model 77, I'll be doing some videos soon showing you guys, well, you know, we'll, we'll give them a test run and see how they sew. And we'll compare, you know, the heirloom versus the uh, hybrid machine. And uh, we'll see what kind of stitching these machines are ready to do now that they've been given their service. Uh, appreciate all of you watching and stay tuned for the next Genomi video. Thank you.